Thank you so much for tuning back in with Sunshine in the Kitchen. Today I have a couple tasty things on the menu. I have the day off, went grocery shopping, so I'm going to try and knock a couple videos out today. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. We are going to be making a classic Philly cheesesteak sandwich with all top ingredients. So what those ingredients are, they're very simple but very tasty. We got a ribeye steak. We have a bell pepper, one onion, I have a couple mushrooms, some provolone cheese, I have some vegetable oil and a nice baguette. You can use any type of sandwich bread that's in a loaf. You can use, there's a steak sandwich bread that I was on the hunt for, but my grocery store didn't have it. And they did have some fresh baguettes, so this will be just fine salt and pepper to taste and that's it so there's simple ingredients and this is a classic Philly cheesesteak sandwich here's how to make it so when you're making a classic Philly cheesesteak sandwiches if you search any recipe you'll see that all the classics use a ribeye steak cutting ribeye steak when it's fresh out of the refrigerator it could be a little bit difficult because you really want to thinly slice it so a little trick that you can do is 30 minutes prior to cooking it you put it in your freezer so when you put it in your freezer, it makes it really firm and it's not frozen. It just makes it a really nice texture to cut it into really thin slices. So first we're going to be slicing this up. So I have my beautiful piece of ribeye right here. It's firm to the touch. It's been in the freezer for about 30 minutes. And with my knife, I'm just going to trim off any large chunks of fat that I may notice. If you see some marbling inside of the meat, leave that. It's going to make great flavor for your Philly cheesesteak. But any large chunks like this, you can just trim off. And all this is good to use. So I'm going to leave the rest of all that marbling right inside. going to be making the steak chunks about this thin. It's super paper thin. It's going to cook really fast, but it's going to be the perfect texture for our sandwich. Now that I have all my steak chopped up, I'm then going to move on to my bell pepper. I'm going to be making these into slices and really thin slices. So I have my bell peppers all sliced up. They're all in bite-sized pieces and they're chopped really thin, just like so. Next, I'm moving on to slicing up my onion and I'm not gonna do these in a mince or chopped form. I'm gonna do the same as the bell pepper and I'm gonna try and make them into really thin slices. So my onion is all nice and sliced up. I used about half of one full white onion and I used a little more than half of my whole green bell pepper. Next I'm moving on to my mushrooms. I already cleaned off my mushrooms. Mushrooms do tend to get really dirty but they also absorb almost anything that you put on them so you don't want to clean them under running water however you do want to clean them. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a wet napkin or a really damp napkin and you're just going to rub off all the dirt until it's clean just like this. So now that my mushroom's all clean, I'm going to be slicing it up into bite-sized slices just like the rest of my vegetables. And I'm just going to remove the stumps just like that. mushrooms are going to be about this thin once you're done slicing them. And depending how much you like mushrooms depends on how much you use. I'm probably going to be using anywhere between three and five mushrooms. If you like a lot, then use six and up. So I just cut a piece off of my baguette and it's going to be kind of like a book when you open it. It's not going to be cut all the way through the back side, so you still want that back end right there, but just most of the way you're going to cut through so you can stuff it with your cheese and your meat and all your veggies. And I have my oven at 375 degrees. I lined a tray with some foil and I melted some butter. I'm just going to brush 
right along the inside of my bread with some of the butter so that way it could crisp up and it could be a nice little crunch when you bite into your sandwich. Not burnt, but a slight char and it just makes it a little bit crispy and you can even brush it along the outside a little bit just like so. So now that I have butter all over my bread on the inside, I'm just going to have it with the back side down and the open side up right in the middle of my pan and it's going to go in a 375 degree oven for about 10 minutes. So I have a nonstick pan here and I'm going to have the flame about on a medium high heat. I'm going to drizzle just a little bit of my olive oil, I mean my vegetable oil. Just a couple tablespoons and first I'm going to be adding all my bell pepper. The bell pepper takes a little bit longer than the onions and mushrooms to cook and since I don't want them doing, being really crunchy in my sandwich and I want them to be really nice and tender and soft, I'm going to be adding those first for about four minutes and when they're slightly tender I'm going to add the onions so those could cook and I'm going to let the onions and the bell peppers cook for about three minutes together then I will be adding the mushrooms. Okay, we'll be back in four minutes. So my bell peppers have been cooking for just a couple minutes. Next, I'm going to be adding all of my onions, tossing those in. I love onions, so I have a lot in this pan. And I also put the flame back on low because the onions take kind of a while to cook as well and they're really thin and I don't want them to burn so the flame is on low. Okay, so I just added my mushrooms and I'm folding those into the rest of the veggies. It looks so good in there and it smells so good. The onions are starting to get nice and soft and these are probably going to sweat in the oil for about another five minutes until all the veggies are really nice and super tender. So my vegetables need about five more minutes to all cook together. I'm going to move them all to one side of the pan. And on this side I'm going to add just a little bit more oil. Move that around. I'm going to add all of my slices of ribeye. And while the ribeye is cooking, the vegetables will be cooking too at a low temperature. It smells so good, guys. I have some freshly ground up black pepper. Very generous amount of salt. Get it over your veggies and your meat. Now I'm just going to start flipping some of these pieces of ribeye over. Look how gorgeous this is looking. Now it's going to cook for probably another five minutes on the other side. And you want to make sure your pan's at a temperature where the steak can be cooking but your vegetables are not burning. And right now my vegetables are all nice and getting soft and tender, but they are not burning whatsoever. Okay, so my steak is just about done. I let it cook really well all the way through, and now I'm going to be tossing it back with all of my veggies. Looks so good, you guys. I'm going to add just a little bit more salt. And I'm going to move it all together in the shape of my sandwich. This is going to be one really stuffed sandwich. And I have two slices of provolone cheese that I had sliced in half. And I'm just going to lay those right on top.
and I'm just going to lay them right on top of my veggies and steak. And since my pan's on a low heat, all the cheese is going to melt right on top of the steak. So yummy, right? And we're just going to let that cook for a little bit. sandwich bread open and I'm just going to grab gorgeous my mouth is just watering smelling this looking at this looking at how gooey that cheese look and it's nice and crispy on the outside of the bread it's toasty to perfection the mushrooms the ribeye the onions the bell pepper it just looks so perfect i just cannot wait to eat this right now oh, it looks so good Okay, seriously guys, this is mouth-watering. This is like better than any sub sandwich place that I've ever seen. And I am a fan of Philly cheesesteak sandwiches and I've eaten several of them. And I feel like I have outdone the pros. I am very impressed, guys. Now time for the taste test, guys. Okay. Alrighty, here we go. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is the jackpot. This is the sandwich right here. The steak is just so tender. Ribeye is the way to go when picking your meat selection. The provolone cheese is just so gooey. The onions are really nice and caramelized. This is just the most tastiest gosh darn sandwich I have ever eaten. And I have eaten plenty of Philly cheesesteaks. It's one of my favorite sandwiches. This is so good, you guys. You have to try this recipe. It is a must. Well, thank you so much for watching me make this today, guys. It's been a pleasure cooking with you, as always. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, God bless from my kitchen to yours. Cheers.